Now, um, one thing I've really enjoyed doing recently is using those like AI image generators. They're so creepy. Have, have you guys tried these? Like, r raise your hand. Yeah, a couple of you. Like Barack Obama as a vampire ordering breakfast. Boom. It's it's so creepy. It's so weird. But that's a really like unsophisticated and kind of creepy example of how AI can actually help to bypass um, creatives in order to get something that you want. Our, our next speaker is someone who believes that this isn't something to be feared, but that AI is a really useful tool in the creation process. He's a sneaker designer, and he uses generative designs to, to design really high-performance sneakers. These were actually debuted at the 2016 Olympics. Really impressive. Now, he's going to be touching on how, how we can use AI to aid the creative process, why we shouldn't fear it. I'm really curious about what he has to say. Um, after his presentation, he will be outside in the brain picking area at the library. So if you'd like to have a chat with him about that, make sure that you, that you get involved. But in the meantime, please give a warm welcome to my guest, Lisant Follet. Hi, good morning, Budapest. Uh, from the metaverse to artificial intelligence, probably two of the most uh, trending words in the creative world in 2022. So my name is Lisan, and for the last decade, I've pioneered and lead a team at Nike, working on uh, understanding how we human can best co-create with machine intelligence. And uh, we started with generative design uh, about a decade ago, implementing it uh, as part of our product creation process. And what generative design is, is, is really a beautiful exploration process powered by algorithms. Uh, we explore vast and rich domain of creativity by mindfully generating and selecting variation. And in 2016, uh, Nike launched the industry first product co-created with algorithm. And uh, this patented groundbreaking innovation leveraged performance data on female athlete insight and help to trailblaze inclusive design powered by algorithmic design. And for us, we understood uh, how powerful of a creative shift it was once we move from exploring one ID to have rich and endless domain to explore. And this is a great example, you know, of generating a unique design for every single shoe size. Um, what we learn is that we can co-create with machine intelligence, and that's a radical shift in the role and responsibility of the human creative on the machine. It really became a shared agency. Uh, it's augmenting creativity as opposed, as opposed to replacing it. And we know that it's also a rich and complex ecosystem. And then 2022 happened, and uh, as you may have seen, it was really the rise of generative art AI. And when John Oliver in September 2022 talked about it on last week tonight, show you then know it's gone from the margin to the mainstream. Moving on, finally tonight, I want to talk about artificial intelligence, or AI. It's a technology which, despite posing a clear existential threat to humanity, we currently manage to keep under our control using pictures of traffic lights. But <laughs> make no mistake, once the machines learn how to recognise them, we are all fucked. <laughs> now, I wanted to talk about AI because there is a new popular trend that you may have heard about. It seems like everyone is talking about these websites that use artificial intelligence to generate images. It's all because of a tool named Dolly, which comes from a startup named OpenAI. You type in a description of something you want to see, and a computer creates realistic images to match. The fun part is you can be really elaborate with your descriptions. The system was trained with 650 million pictures, and the results are some of the best we've seen from computers yet. Yeah, AI image generators. There are a number of them out there now, like Dolly, Crayon, and Midjourney. With each one, you simply type in a text prompt, and it'll create images for you in around a minute. So, for instance, you might type in, let's say, a roast beef superhero. Now, what does that look like? Is it a superhero made of roast beef? Is it a superhero that saves roast beef? Is it both? I have no idea, but here's what Midjourney's AI created <laughs> based on that phrase. And I have to say, well played, robot! So while we were watching John, the reality is that hundreds of thousands of visuals were generated. Tools like Midjourney or Dali have taken the world creative by surprise, and we've never witnessed such a shift in such a period of time because of the ease of access. 
So it's the rapid democratization of co-creation with machine intelligence. And it's extremely fast and powerful for concept exploration. And I could talk about it all day long, how beautiful and amazing it's been to see everyone making art. But you can do that for yourself. Check the social hashtag, and you will get a, a wide breadth of the possible. What I'd like to talk about today uh, got very little press, but it's an important topic uh, for all of us creative. Uh, so let's talk about AI bias. A uh, tool like Midjourney, DALI, or Stable Diffusion are pre-trained on millions of images from the internet that have been pre-annotated. And one of the issues with that is that it's a known fact that the internet is biased towards the English language on Western concept. And we also are aware that most, if not all, AI systems have some aspect of bias inherent from the data set they learn on. Uh, DALI2, one of the generative art AI from a company called OpenAI, actually do a good job. They have a system card on risk and limitation on why we can see uh, some example of bias. So as of April 2022, if we prompt a flight attendant, the system will return 100% Asian women. If we prompt a lawyer, they're all white men in traditional Western lawyer outfit. When we prompt with wedding, we can see that the system tends to assume Western wedding tradition and to default to heterosexual couples. Finally, if we prompt CEO, they're all white Western men again. So from that, we understand that bias in AI is problematic and generalized. But what does it mean for us creative when we start to co-create with a biased art AI? So for that, I'm going to introduce you to the first study. It's me working with Midjourney, a generate AI. And what I do here is I prompt Nike. And what I get is some uh, beautiful uh, brand assets, colorful, even something on the top left that looks like the victory jacket. If we now prompt Nike sculpture, it's definitely Nike the brand. They are the swoosh, what seems to be abstract like sculpture. And then if we look at Nike Greek goddess of victory, Look at this. We have Greek goddess with swoosh for wings wearing athletic bra. But wait a minute. Nike Inc., the company, was named after Nike, the Greek goddess of victory. And we actually celebrate that all the time at Nike. If we go on Wikipedia and look up Nike, we learn that she was often portrayed in Greek art as wing victory in the motion of flight. Well, in order to get Nike, the Greek goddess of victory, I actually have to subtract Nike from the prompt. Yes, remove Nike from the prompt altogether to finally have a Greek goddess of victory that is brandless. So it's very important to understand that words have very strong association learned by the system based on the data set that they're trained on. A word can hold inherent bias, so as we craft prompt, we need to be aware of this. So hey, let's go back in history, 480 before Christ, to understand in depth where Nike, the Greek goddess, originated and what the AI has learned from it. We look at two legitimate, authentic, antique artifacts. One on the left is located in Paris at the Musée du Louvre, and it is a white grand lecados, a vase made for ritual from 480 before Christ. The other one is located in London at the British Museum, and it's a bronze sculpture. They both depict Nike, the Greek goddess of victory. So in this study, we now have an historian co-creating with a generative AI, and frankly, me, I'm just there as a facilitator. So we're taking the museum description of the Greek antique, and we inject it as a prompt into Midjourney, an art AI. And that's it. We have some absolutely ridiculous, funny-looking fake antiques. They are interesting, as they show the tension between white grand techniques from ancient Greek pottery and Nike, the sneaker brand but they are pretty far from any sort of representation of Nike, goddess of victory. So second case study, this time with a British uh, historian. We take the description of the Greek antique artifact and inject it as a prompt into Midjourney. And that's it. Pay attention to the one on the left. We have a headless figure holding a shoe over her head towards the sky. Pretty symbolic of what we worship as the society currently. We have gone from revering god and goddess to revering brand. But hey, it's definitely made out of bronze, give it that. Is it genuine? Well, for the AI, it looks like it, and that's the problem. So we know that generative art are trained on very large data set. One of them is Lion. It's a 5.85 billion image text pairs data set. And it's openly accessible, it's open source. You can use it to train art model. One of the examples is uh, Stable Diffusion. And recently, a couple of websites 
avalanche that let us search a sample of the Lion dataset. So we look at what we get returned to us when searching with the word Nike. And with no surprise, see that the closest match is 100% Nike the brand, not one reference to Nike the Greek goddess of victory or anything Greek related either. In a recent interview with The Verge, Emad Mostak, the CEO of Stability AI, an open source art AI, say that the AI world is currently on a path to be dominated by the culture and ethics of Silicon Valley. But open source software can help decentralize this future. Why is that? Well, as Emad explained us, there is a real need for different nations to develop their own model and data set in order to reflect the diversity of humanity, rather than the monoculture of the Internet, which is overwhelmingly Western. And monoculture of the Internet is actually something we creative have experienced with the overly used so-called inspiration tool Pinterest. And in 2010, Pinterest was the coolest tool to find unique inspiration. We all thought that trend researcher would become obsolete. But then a decade later, we really start to see that everyone is looking at the same visual. And we literally had a couple of all, we literally all of us had a couple of them on our mood board. So that's because the Pinterest algorithm has a ranking and popularity bias issue. So we really see that AI creative bias is problematic. And in a way, it is a virulent form of creative banality. So what do we do? Well, for now, that's what we have access to, bias art AI. And once we are aware of the risk and limitation of those systems, we can get more precise and play around with crafting the prompt. So we leverage the weakness and power of the AI to our advantage. So in, in this case today, we once again have an historian co-creating with the generative AI, but with a twist. What we do this time is that we fine-tune the prompt to be more precise. We want to explore what would it mean if Nike was indeed a shoe company 480 before Christ. So we had Air Max after Nike. Look at this. From a blank canvas 480 before Christ unfolds an entire rich domain of form, proportion, bold silhouette that are all creative answers to a particular equation or prompt. How oh, beautiful. They are definitely shoe. And they definitely look like they could have been worn by Greeks for an athletic competition at Olympia in the Peloponnesus. OK, now we pivot and enter a new domain of creation. And for this, I'd like to welcome to the stage Blenderboard 3. As implied by his name, there were two before him, but they were weak, so they got retired. Blenderboard 3 is a 175 billion parameter publicly available chatbot. It's supposed to improve its skill and safety over time and was built and launched by Meta in August 22 as a state-of-the-art AI chatbot. And this time, we look at two AI co-creating together. One is the AI chatbot, BlenderBot 3, and we ask it what is its favorite painting, and then we, well, me, the human as a facilitator, fit the description into mid-journey, the art AI, and we witness what happened. Wow, we witness a rather distracted BlenderBot 3 AI chatbot co-creating with Midjourney the art AI. They made art together. And as expected, when two biased AI co-create together, the resulting art is biased to Nike the brand. But wait, look at this. There are so many layers. There is an abstract face. Is that the great goddess? Maybe. There's a shoe. And finally, to a non-expert eye, it definitely could look like a Picasso. Well done, you two. So I really love that last artwork. So I actually commissioned a painter, he go by the name Shu in Shenzhen, China, to reinterpret the AI-generated painting as a real, authentic oil painting, 
painted with actual oil, not an oil filter in Photoshop, the one that takes day to dry and smell for weeks. Anchu started from the digital image, made this masterpiece, and sent it to me by DHL. So I now have a totally fake Picasso. In 1972, Nike released the Brun, a very simple sneaker featuring a plain upper with the trademark Nike swoosh on the side, showing off the brand with pride. Pablo Picasso, inspired by this minimalist silhouette, painted in 1972 one of his last masterpieces, Nike. This exquisite oil painting depicts the complex relation between Nike, the Greek goddess, represented by an abstract face of a woman, and at the forefront, the product of the sneaker brand Nike, simple and iconic line of the brim. Picasso's choice of a vivid red for the background is a direct reference to ancient Greek, with red symbolizing superhuman heroism. The basket of fruit is highly symbolic, reminiscent of biblical story, particularly that of Adam and Eve on their original scene in the Garden of Eden. In this way, fruit evokes images of temptation and provocation. This late-life masterpiece from Pablo was discovered in 2022 in Mougin, south of France. Okay, moving on. In our last conversation with BlenderBot3, we learned that the algorithm favorite food is ketchup. But what is ketchup? Ketchup origin is rich, as far back as 300 before Christ we find the ancestor to the ketchup we all know today, a fermented fish sauce from southern China. And in June 2022, this Heinz commercial launch. Astonishing. We see our staying trapped in a low-level cluster of creative bias towards end ketchup caused these marketers to come up with an ironic piece of creative content that, if anything, celebrates AI creative bias and the power of marketing in eroded or common cultural heritage. The reference to HAL 9000 from the movie 2001 Space Odyssey is ironic. The computer that runs Discovery Spaceship has become an iconic symbol of man technology turning on its creator. Because we co-create with a biased algorithm, do we need to worry about creating a creative monoculture? Well, we probably should. So this time we chat with BlenderBot3, and we ask it to reflect on this Heinz commercial trying to assess how strong Blender bot bias is. So as you can see, by default, BlenderBot has a strong bias towards ketchup being a tomato-based condiment invented by ants, which at this point of the talk comes with no surprise. But if we ask questions, 
and push BlenderBot to fact check, then we can see that very quickly BlenderBot is capable of acknowledging that there is much more to the history of Ketchup. This truly highlights the importance of being critic of the first answer of search system. All right, almost time to wrap up. So in this last study, after previously discussing Ketchup on ice, we this time asked BlenderBot what a painting on that subject will look like. And we once again passed it to Midjourney, an art AI. business of transforming tomato into gold, interpreted by the art AI as a gold lingot inside a ketchup jar. Absolutely brilliant, and if you ask me, totally outsmart and creative. So in the end, if we pay attention, look at what AI creates with a critical eye, are aware of the risk and limitation, then co-creating with generative system is pure creative augmentation. But if we don't, then maybe we are witnessing one of the greatest threats to creativity. Thank you very much. And I have some complimentary limited uh, edition postcard of the art those two bots met together. So please find me uh, to claim it. Thank you.